Hey there friends, Dave Pilatus, Can't Have Missing Project, copyrighted edition for our video channel. And uh, we're going to be talking about Skinwalker Ranch today. And uh, what happened at the ranch when they aired the segment June 14th, 2022. And uh, in that segment, they introduced uh, one of the security people that was on the ranch, a man named Chris Bartell. So I went to his website, and this is the bio on Chris. It says, United States Air Force Veterans, Security Forces, and etc. Department of Energy Protective Force, NNSS, National Nevada Security Site, BAAS, Bigelow Aerospace Advanced Space Studies, Security and Investigations Officer, Department of Veteran Affairs. Chris Bartell has over 20 years of security and law enforcement experience. His primary profession has been protection of personnel and property, which has led him down many interesting paths. Those travels inspired his artistic creativity and expanded his vision. His true passion has always been photography. Chris has carried a camera with him since high school and has documented important experiences throughout his life. His first paranormal experience was at age 17 at an old Kansas farmhouse. Chris spent time in the Air Force, 20 years of living in Las Vegas, time spent in Montana, investigating the Goldfield Hotel in Nevada, and recently his time at Skinwalker Ranch of all contributed to his photographic vision. So I think what they're trying to do at the ranch is bring people that spent time as part of the Bigelow investigation get from them as much as they can about what Bigelow did. But Bigelow did not turn over all of his investigative paperwork about what they did discover there. And you got to remember, Mr. Bigelow is a very smart man. And if he hired some security people like Chris to be at the ranch, it's a guarantee that Chris had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And that NDA restricted him from saying what he saw, what he did, what he photographed, etc. So remember this, and this is really important, that Chris is not and would not say anything that was not approved by Mr. Bigelow. So as we move forward, <coughs> and talk about what happened in this chapter at the ranch. <coughs> Excuse me. You gotta remember that it's all been filtered, which is important. So, the ranch. A lot of people don't know this. But remember, when we talk about profile points with my work, one of the most important things is following them to a T. So what did they talk about in this segment? Well, right away, they went to an area that had a boulder field, a boulder field. And there's several that surround that ranch. There isn't just one, there are several. But what is also important is water and the proximity to water. Well, funny thing is, this ranch is within one mile of the largest body of water anywhere near that area. And the closest city is Fort Duchesne. And they talk about Roosevelt all the time. That's the biggest city in the area, but Fort Duchesne is the closest city. And they have this reservoir called Bottle Hollow. So the ranch is down here, and here's Bottle Hollow res Reservoir. Now, is there a connection between here and here? Is there some type of underground aquifer from here to here? I don't know. But the ranch also has a creek that flows through it. This is generally a pretty dry area. So to have a reservoir that large, so close, hmm. I'm intrigued by that. I've always been intrigued by that. 
And when I, when I was taught to by people associated with the ranch, first questions I asked, is there a large body of water near there? I said, yeah, there is. Is there boulder fields? Uh, yeah, there is. So, getting into the segment itself. They introduced Chris Bartell. He worked at the ranch for six years, 2010 through 2016. Former military officer. And Bartell takes him near the triangle area that has had a lot of the research done. And just so happens that in 2010, him and another security officer found some large canine tracks there. And they said that the canine tracks sunk deep into the mud compared to their own dog tracks, which indicates this canine weighed a lot more. Could it have been a wolf? Nobody asked that question. They want to leave it with intrigue. A three foot stride on a dog is not that much, especially if it was running. <clears throat> then they played up the part about the legend of Skinwalker, a man changing into a wolf, shape-shifting, yeah, right, you know, whatever. I believe in that kind of stuff. I think it, it may happen, but they played that up hard and that kind of annoyed me. <clears throat> well, as Chris and his other security officer are there, they hear something in the bush right next to where they're standing. And they heard what he stated as a god-awful guttural growl. And then an animal jumps out and runs off. And then he said it disappeared, which is important, folks. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things in the crypto world that people don't even like to talk about. but. Unfortunately, they happened at the ranch several times. And George Knapp and Colm Kelleher wrote in their book that the oddest thing that ever happened at that ranch was some people were coming up to the front gate. And I know you guys are going to laugh and you're going to think, wow, why would George and Colm even write that? It's so outlandish, nobody would believe it. So they drive up to the front gate at the ranch and they see a couple of figures that look like wolves standing up on their hind legs, smoking in trench coats. You got that right. Two large figures that look like wolves standing on their back legs, wearing trench coats, smoking at the front gate. Now George stated that he contemplated not putting in the book because it was so outlandish but outlandish was kind of what went along with this ranch. So when Bartell talks about a large canine track, he didn't go into a lot of detail about how they saw this thing run out from where it was, that it run on all fours. He didn't go into a lot of detail what it looked like either. That bothered me. But they had seen large canine tracks at the ranch before. And then he goes to an area up on the hillside and they find a cave with some canine traps inside. Well, that's not unusual if you're a ranch and they had wolves in the area. Wolves are predators of livestock. So there's no doubt that the owners previous of the ranch would want to capture them and kill them. And a lot of times these wolves den up in caves. That's why they probably had those traps in the cave. Not a big mystery. So then Travis and uh, one of the other ranch people go to a radio station. And the radio station talks about how people online are having difficulty getting their signal. And it was an online streaming type fuzz. And then she went on to say that they couldn't hear the radio station online. Now, when they played, when Travis played the sounds that they picked up, which they said was communication, 
I'm not sure if anyone else picked up on this, but I watched this with somebody else very close to me. And we both agreed that it almost sounded like underwater echoes, like sounds from a submarine, kind of. That echoing type sound. <clears throat> Why is that important? Well, remember, they stated that when the aircraft were flying around and doing GPS coordinates, that the GPS coordinates went underground. Well, also, I just told you about this huge reservoir less than a mile from the ranch. So could those sounds that they heard have been emanating from that location? I don't know. But I doubt you will hear anything about that water in this research. Bottle Hollow Reservoir. So, Travis has the station broadcast what they picked up. <clears throat> and they play it. And on their recording of what the station is transmitting, the waveform of the transmission from the radio station changed when they played Travis's recording. And Travis said that that wasn't normal and he doesn't know how that could have happened. I'm not an expert on electronics. I'm not going to comment on it, but I believe it if he said it. And they were looking for a response from the community. And then <clears throat> later on, Jim Morris, who's the ranch manager, shows up at the ranch with a recording of some UFOs that were recorded the night before. And there were a series of lights in the sky. And if you looked at them, they were almost equidistant from each other. And right away, when I saw that, it reminded me of two things. A couple years back, I did a MUFON conference, a national conference, where Lynn Kate, uh, <clears throat> she was a physician from Phoenix. And her and her husband, also a physician, lived up on a hill on the perimeter of Phoenix and have some great recordings of the Phoenix lights that one night were really strangeness ha happened over Phoenix. And those lights, the Phoenix lights, reminded me a lot of what we were looking at in this event. It also reminded me of something else, and I've talked about this before, but I'll, I'll bring it up again. Back when I was a, a new policeman, it was probably his second year, I went to, to Northern California with a really good buddy that was in vet school at UC Davis and he brought along a couple of his friends and we went to Northern California up near the Scott River near the Oregon border and we went fishing for a couple days and we were staying on uh, just some open range land in the mountains that was owned by a friend of my buddy and we were just we didn't have tents we were just sleeping outside and at about 10.30, 11 o'clock, the first night, <clears throat> we're looking up into the sky, laying in our sleeping bags, and we see these bright lights in the sky. Very, very similar to what they showed on Skinwalker Show. Except these lights went and gave us a show for hours. There were about five or six of them, and they were grouped together, and then they would spread apart and go to the far ends of what we could see on the horizon and they would do this rapidly we were trying to estimate how many miles they would go from here to here and dead stop and then move around very uniformly and then come together and you could see that they were all different but they were almost in a group and then they would rotate and they'd go apart to other parts of the horizon and boy being with these guys <clears throat> way smarter than me we said there can't be anything out there that's ours that can move that fast because we were estimating it had to be between 60 and 100 miles that we were seeing on these horizon runs because we were on the top of this mountain and uh, it was something I'll never forget in fact I get together with my friend and we, we still talk about it to this day and uh, that was really my first UFO sighting but it reminded me very much of what was filmed and 
the reaction to those people that were watching this, it only added to the credibility of that video and the number of people who had seen it. So they kind of made, a, tried to make an association between them playing the sounds through the radio station and this being seen. I thought it was a rather loose connection to say the best, to say the least. So then they, uh, <clears throat> they also went back to that boulder field and they had a guy come in and work for an oil company and I thought that was ridiculous. You know, if you want to bring in a geologist, maybe a geologist can tell you what happened, but his statements about how this happened and how it was probably purposeful, I'm sorry, that part I didn't buy too much. I don't know if it was purposeful, but I don't think that Bartel would be talking about it if Mr. Bigelow had blown the side of that mountain off. I just don't think so. I don't think he would have been allowed to talk about it. And uh, that man's name was Jake Hoffman. Not that I don't believe his opinion, I just think that they could have gotten somebody else with a, a lot more education on the topic. So then they went back to and had a team meeting at the info center and they talked about the stride of the animal at three feet. And they talked about how when they were flying, those GPS coordinates seemed to go into the mountain right at that area of the, of the cave in the boulder field area. And the smoke going into the cave area. and possibly these UFOs going into that mountain area. Now, there's a very famous UFO site at Mount Adams in Washington. And during the summer months, a lot of people accumulate in that area and watch these UFOs dance above Mount Adams and the surrounding area and go in and out of Mount Adams. So, and there's other locations in the US that are pretty famous for this. Um, it's not that unusual to see a UFO go into a mountain. And I know it makes no sense. It's hard to understand. It's hard to even believe if you saw it, but it happens. They obviously have some type of ability that we have no understanding of. So then uh, a man named Pete Kelsey came with a drone. And then uh, one of the guys at the ranch said there were rampant rumors about underground tunnels. When they took a measurement, there was 40, 64 degrees coming out of the hole on the mount, on the boulder field and 102 degrees on the rocks. Made sense. Smoke being sucked in. Somebody said, where is its lungs? I thought that was an interesting comment. I don't really have an opinion on if there is something like underground tunnels at this ranch. I do believe if there were, Mr. Rigolo and his crew probably know of it. So Brandon, the owner of the ranch arrives, Bartels, they talk to him about the, the cavern and the boulder fields. And Travis says, maybe there's some sort of network under the Mesa. And as I stated earlier, if Mr. Bigelow and his team blasted that area to seal it, there's no way Bartel would be able to talk about it. And as I stated before, if Bartel is still under an NDA, then everything he has said had to have been approved by Mr. Bigelow. Same with John Alexander the week before, if he was under an NDA, then there is a guarantee that he had to get approval to be on this show as well. Now, what I find interesting is that there's obviously some type of cooperation going on between the old Bigelow crew and the new story presentation. But it's, it's a blurry line to me because Mr. Bigelow isn't going to give up his research to Brandon, because if he did, we would already know about it and we'd be talking about it. And a lot of the 
testing and research that Travis is doing has already probably been done by Mr. Bigelow's team multiple times in the Defense Intelligence Agency that was there. But Bartel never stated that that mountainside was blasted. That, that is important. Now, of, of all the segments up to now, I really thought that was one of the more mundane shows that they had. I didn't think they had a lot of luck with some of those things. Uh, say the playing of the sounds from the radio station. I actually thought that was a brilliant idea by Travis. And they never said if they were monitoring the triangle zone at the time the sounds were playing from the radio station. And I was a little surprised by that because if they weren't monitoring that triangle area, it seems like that was a mistake. They should have been. And then to come back and say, hey, these were the distances or that the data changed, it would have been an epiphany at some level. But having Travis at the radio station or out at the car, I almost think he should have been back at the ranch in that triangle zone monitoring some type of data that was accumulated. So what's going to happen from here? Well, George Knapp, uh, he is a chief investigative reporter for CBS Las Vegas. He's been to the ranch multiple times, really good friends with Mr. Bigelow, and very tight with Colm Kelleher. They've written two books. He interviewed Travis a couple weeks ago. It was a very good interview. George always does good interviews. But in the interview, Travis stated that he had night terrors when he was at the property, but he didn't have them when he was at home. And uh, one of the more interesting things that Travis said was that his wife asked him, why do you keep going back when you get these radiation burns and night terrors? And, and Travis said, well, there's, there's some really huge secret that's going on at that ranch. I want to figure out what it is. I thought, man, the guy thinks just like I do. So after watching Travis do that interview, you know, a lot of people here give me a lot of garbage about, oh, you know, this is just a show for entertainment, blah, blah, blah. If you look at Travis Taylor, Dr. Travis Taylor, and you look at his background, that man is the perfect individual to be doing this research at the ranch. I sort of wish that they would be willing to bring in some religious scholars to poke the tiger a little bit at that level. I think it'd be interesting. And they may still do it, I don't know. I, I know that last year they did bring in <clears throat> one Jewish religious scholar and he talked about it, it was interesting. But um, I think it'd be, it'd be really good to bring in a variety in one one hour segment, just do it all about religion and bring in somebody that far Eastern religion, somebody on conventional God religion, somebody on um, Brandon, the owner of the ranch is a, is a Mormon, bring in a Mormon official from Salt Lake, bring in a, uh, a Catholic official. I bring in five or six, but I bring in groups that represented a cross-section of the world. 
and uh, I would be monitoring everything that happened there while each person was on the property and if they had a ceremony they could do to cleanse the property maybe that's not what Brandon and Travis want and maybe that's not why they're doing it I don't know but thing I got this this week reinforcement of the boulder fields I just explained to you the water I think the idea about what Brandon pulled that he thought was communication I would give it to some uh, voice experts and I would probably play it at 20 30 different speeds forwards and backwards and see if there was anything there that could be deciphered as language again I'm kind of surprised they haven't done that yet but maybe they are maybe they're going to and maybe they're waiting for the results I don't know I don't want to second guess Travis he's way smarter than me and he's doing a good job and uh, that's why he has my interest and he has my support and as far as Brandon the owner of the ranch I know he's giving a ton of financial support to Travis and that team and the amount of money he's putting out to try to get to the bottom of this not many people have done Mr. Bigelow did it but the difference is Brandon is doing this and putting it out in front of the public as it happens that's a huge gesture so I appreciate that anyhow hope you enjoyed this segment weird things happening here on uh, YouTube I can't put a pinned comment up the pinned comment is the number one comment uh, on the video I can't do it anymore they restricted me so I uh, sometimes the last video I pulled one comment that one of you made I pin that in a and attached a reply to it I can't even see it I can't even see what you guys said to it the restrictions that they're placing on me is they're not taking down my videos because they know I'm telling the truth but they're restricting me from accessing and communicating with you and that's a horror show that I've got to get away from and uh, again I need you working for me on this I need to find a, a site where I can upload my videos in 4k I can upload 65 75 minutes of content at one time many of these sites only allow you a 15 minute upload there's an issue many of them don't allow 4k upload number three no censorship a lot of these uh, new sites say oh we limit our censorship well it's the way YouTube started and now look at them number four this has to be subscriber based and I say that because Rumble advertises that they monetize their channels and they'll monetize your video. I have several friends that are on Rumble right now and they're getting pennies on the dollar compared to what YouTube pays. So it's not even worth my time to go to Rumble. And I had an appointment to talk to one of the executives at Rumble because they saw how my numbers were really good on YouTube. Guess what happened? They sent, I sent an inquiry in this high I won't say who but very high level person at Rumble responded back to me I said yeah Dave we'd like to talk to you blah 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 I responded back to him never heard from him again boom nothing so Rumble's out of the picture and so that means I have to go to a subscriber based now I won't price price it high that I exclude people I want to do that but it, I, I my times were something and so I have to go to a subscriber based platform and that's one part of it the other part is I'm able to do live shows why do I want to do live shows because I want to interact with you guys I want to be able to have you ask me questions me answer them live I think that's part of a bond that will develop between the host and the people so those are my requirements for a site please don't just throw names at me of sites because I've looked at them the majority of them and they don't fit the bill and there might be a couple out there that I haven't seen 
but don't don't throw names at me because I've unless you've done the research yourself and there's some epiphany out there that I haven't I didn't know about and that I would appreciate it so my guess is that the restrictions on YouTube are going to get more and more and more I probably won't be able to respond to people's comments in the future I'm guessing that's going to happen just so you know about 85 or 90 percent of all the comments that you make on my videos I give a thumbs up to I have no idea even if those are going and people are saying I'm giving them a thumbs up and then probably 90% of my comments nobody responds to so I'm not even sure if you're seeing them there's my frustration level it's pretty much through the roof and uh, I'm ready to leave I just got to find the platform to go to so thank you very much uh, you're a great crowd and I care about you a lot and we're gonna do great things together whatever happens in the future so uh, I'll see you soon. And there is Miss Huck. Huck is uh, doing really good. She's growing like a weed. She's a really happy puppy. And she keeps dad real busy every day. And we have a lot of fun together. And she likes to come in here when I make the videos and just lay around and be part of the team. Yeah. She's kind of getting a big head. She's hearing that you guys like her. She's going to get demanding soon. She's going to want a rug and a big cozy blanket here pretty soon. Oh boy, it's going to get out of control. Politis out.